Good morning, saints of God. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. If today happens to be your first time of listening to any of our prayer sessions, my name is Gertrude Jurassa Payne of DP Global Ministries, and this is part of our 100 Days Prayer Marathon, which started on the 1st of September 2020, and it's going to run through to the 9th of December 2020. Welcome aboard. You can always go back and watch other videos. I encourage you to subscribe. I encourage you to put a like and put a comment on, on, on this page if you you do like what is going on here and please do share it with other brothers and sisters hallelujah I want us to enter into a time of worship right now. It's our tradition to enter into a time of worship because I believe that one of our calling is to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us begin to worship him. It is solely by the grace and mercies of God that we wake up every morning. And so when we wake up, I just want us to praise him. Spend some time thanking him for where you are. Spend some time thanking him for where he's taking you and everything that he has in store for you. Spend some time praising him for your community for your neighborhood for the world that we find ourselves in and so today our worship text that I want us to look at is Psalm 86 verse 12 Psalm 86 verse 12 it says that I will give thanks to you O Lord with all of my heart I will glorify your name forever Psalm 95 verse 6 goes on to say, Come, let us worship and let us bow down and let us kneel before the Lord our maker Come, let us worship, let us bow down and let us kneel before the God, our maker. And the final one is Psalm 71 verse 8. It says, my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. My mouth is filled with your praise and, and your glory all day long. Is your mouth filled with the praise of God and his glory? Do you tell others about him? Are you constantly in a position of prayer? Are you constantly in prayer, in communication and supplication to God? Or are we spending our time moaning? and complaining and whinging if you don't like something you pray about it if you don't like something you do something about it and rather than us spending time complaining let us go to God and pray and let us hear what God has to say about the situation and, and let us begin to run with what God gives us and let us worship him let us have his praise in our mouth all day long and, and his glory all day long I will be filled with your praise and your glory we honor you we exalt you we honor you we adore you Lord and, and I bow down before you bowing down means you reverend him you submit to him father we submit to you this morning we bow down before you we surrender to you we say that you are our God we say that you are our king and whatever you ask us to do is what we will do and I pray that whatever you have in store for us this morning will locate us and I pray that as we worship you Lord whatever you have in store for us will be released into our spirit man and our earthly body will begin to, to follow suit in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I bless you. And I honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, yesterday we started on a topic called I've messed up or failed, but not giving up. I may be messed up, but I refuse to give up. I may be wounded, but I refuse to fall down and lose the battle. I will continue to soldier on. And I may have done some things that I'm not proud of, but I'm still standing tall and fulfilling everything that God has said concerning my life. And I will rise up up and do everything that God has said that I would do. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto you, Fear not, for I will help thee. That is the word of God to somebody this morning. He says that for I, the Lord, your God will hold your right hand. May God begin to roll the right hand of someone. When God holds up your right hand, do you know what that means? It means victory. It means empowerment. It means power belongs to you. It means that God is lifting you up. He's empowering you. He's pouring himself into you. He says that I, the Lord, thy God will hold up your right hand and I will say unto thee, fear not. I don't know who is afraid because of the mess you were in. I don't know who is afraid because you're afraid of failure. I don't know. Some of us are not even doing anything because we are afraid to fail. So you haven't even done anything yet. 
yet. And you've given up just because of the thought that I could potentially fail. The thought of failure has made you give up on life. The thought of failure has caused, caused you to give up. The thought of what men could potentially say about you has caused you to give up on life. Just that fear has caused you. But God is saying, I'm telling you this morning, fear not. I will hold up your right hand and, and I will pour out my power and my spirit in you. And, and I say, fear not, for I will help you. That is the word of God to someone this morning before we go into our other text this morning. God says that fear not, for I am with you. I will hold up your right hand and I will help you. Do you know what that means for God to help you? When God helps you, my God, there's no man that can stop you. When God begins to help you, you become unstoppable. There is absolutely nothing that you cannot do. Somebody take a minute out and say, Father, thank you and help me. My God, I thank you that you have come to uphold my right hand. And I, Father, I am grateful that you've come to remove every fear from my heart and every fear from my mind. And, and Father, I thank you that you have come to help me because I so need your help right now. I need your help in this time of my life. I need your help in the mess that I am in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we are going to look in John chapter 8 verse 1 to 11. I really want to go into this topic very well so it will be done over the next two days. So I'm going to read the text but then tomorrow we will come back and finish it. It's John chapter 8 verse 1 to 11. I will quickly read through it. It says, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives but early the next morning he was back again in the temple. A crowd gathered and sat down and he taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of the religious laws and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Verse 4, Jesus, they said, teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of, the, the law of Moses says that we should stone her. But what do you say? Verse 6. Then they tried to trap him into saying something that they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his fingers. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped back down and began to write in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? He asked. No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. The woman was caught in adultery. They brought her, the woman who was caught in adultery, before the crowd. The Bible starts by saying in John chapter 8 verse 1 that Jesus was in the temple and he was teaching. And there was a massive crowd. And these people, the teachers of the law, brought this woman who they said they had caught her in adultery. And I want to understand that when somebody is caught in adultery, it's two people that have been caught in it but only one party was brought and it says that she has been caught in adultery and so they come to ask Jesus what to do who has ever been brought before a crowd who has ever been disgraced in the presence of all who has ever committed a sin in private that has become so public and you have now become a spectacle your dirty lily all of a sudden is now in public the very people who were in the crowd or reported you or the very people who are chastising you may be guilty of similar sins themselves. They may be responsible for all manners of things themselves. But then these are the very people that have brought you in the crowd. These are the very people that are standing before the crowd that are speaking about you. 
it says that we found this woman in an act of adultery at no point in time did they say that we have brought the man and the woman both to you but they are saying that we have found this woman in adultery and, and so we have brought them two people were caught but only one was brought before the crowd I just want to say that sometimes an experience like this can leave you all messed up Yes, I have done something in the private that has now become public knowledge. I have done something in private that has now been brought into the public eye. My dirty linen is in public. And yet I was caught in this scene with someone. We did this together, but I'm the only one that is bearing the brunt of it. And I just want to say and, and, and appreciate that things like this can leave a person all messed up. It can leave you broken. It can leave you confused. It can leave you destroyed. And, Two people go into a marriage and one and a marriage does not work, but one person has to, to bear the brunt of the failure of the marriage, which can leave you all messed up. It can leave you all broken. It can leave you all shattered. It can leave you feeling like you are a failure. Who has been brought and made to stand before a group of people or stand before a crowd? And who has been brought and been standing before a crowd all your life? Some of us have been standing before a crowd all your life. And you are constantly find yourself where people are pointing fingers at you your situation has now become your name and the woman with the issue of blood they did not even give her a name she was now defined by the issue and some of you the mess that you caused you are now given that name and homo wrecker gold digger all manners of names and who has messed up and that has now defined the chapter not just the chapter of your life and, but it is threatening to define all the chapters of your life and because people are refusing to let go um, and they continue to press it on um, and you have now decided that I cannot go on anymore. Um, who is it that has caused one mistake and one error and this one mistake and error is trying to frame your life and is trying to control your life and um, sometimes if looks could kill and um, if looks could kill some of us would not be here. People are looking at you and um, in a particular way people are speaking of you and um, some are no longer speaking of you behind your back. They are speaking of you to your face and um, because of the mess that you have done but yet who are we and um, who are we that we should judge someone and um, a situation that took place in your life and um, that you know yourself that you it is wrong um, but the pain and the loss and the fallout and the shame and the disgrace has become so unbearable um, that you have you feel like you want to lock yourself up and throw the keys away and um, you are struggling to rise up that situation has kept you down um, because if you look at the life of that woman she caused one mess um, and she was brought to the crowd. Uh, Jesus was in the temple and he was che teaching um, but they dragged her from outside. This is something that happened in the secret. Um, this is something that she was doing in the secret um, and she and a man was doing it in the secret um, and then now she's been dragged out from the secret into the public place and um, not just any public place but it has spilled over into the temple um, and Jesus is in the crowd. Um, your mess is now in the temple. Um, your mess is now in the crowd and um, to the point where you have decided I'm no longer going to church and um, you have decided I am no longer doing this and um, because many of you are hypocrites in here and um, some of them you know the things that they have done themselves and um, I won't be surprised that some of the teachers of the law that brought her to Jesus and um, the reason they know that she is a prostitute and adulterous woman is because they have done their own business with her um, but they got the cheek to drag her um, into the house of God and um, to come and report um, who is it that needs encouraging? I want to encourage you that you can rise up um, because by the time we are finishing this text tomorrow, um, you will realize that she begins to rise up. They go on to say in verse 5 that according to the laws of Moses, she must be stoned. Um, she must be killed. People think that you must be killed. Um, people think that you must be locked up. People think that you have to be tarnished by what you have done for the rest of your life. Um, people then begin to think that nothing good can come out of you. Um, because of what you did, your whole reputation is in ruin. Your whole reputation is in tatters. Um, your whole reputation has been destroyed. Um, they think that nothing good can come. Um, people are counting crimes. Act 
that mess and they do same things they want to prosecute you and they want you to see to, to see you punished so badly and because of the mess that you are in because of that one situation that you are in and they want to see you destroyed for it and they want to see your whole life destroyed for it and the same people who said Hosanna will be the same people that said crucify you and the same people that were your friends once are the same people that are speaking against you and the same people that were with you once are the same people that are saying that no and be crucified are the same people that are saying and spreading all manners of, of, of rumors about you and the media is against you and oh the people are against you your reputation is in tatters and everything seems to be against you and they are using this guess they are, this this situation to trap you and they are using this situation to keep you down and they are using this situation to de completely destroy you and but I've come to encourage someone that you can rise up again and this woman by the tomorrow you will realize that she can rise up again and I want us to begin to pray I don't know what you were in I don't know what mess you were in and I don't know what challenging situation you were in and I don't know what things that you have experienced and but I just know that God gave me this topic this week and because he wanted me to pray because there's someone that needs this prayer there's someone that needs to hear this word and there's someone that needs encouraging there's someone that needs to be told that you can rise up again and there's someone that needs to to be told and there is hope there is hope there is hope there's someone that needs to be told and that your situation is turning around there's someone that needs to be told and that 24 hours by now and tomorrow by this time your story can be changed and there's someone that needs to be told that answers have come and there's someone that needs to be told that you are coming out and there's someone that needs to be told and that your latter days will be better than your former days and there's someone that needs to be told and that God is forgiving you and there's someone Someone that needs to be told and um, that God is forgiving you he's took mercy on you and um, there's someone that needs to be told that God is lifting you up from under the burden um, there's someone that needs to be told that God is lifting up your right hand and um, there's someone that needs to be told that God is making a way uh, God is forgiving you um, and he's about to change the narrative of your story um, because tomorrow we will realize that there was something done for this woman and um, begin to arise up in prayer and um, we've only got 20 minutes so I can't always talk about every topic um, so today we're gonna end this topic from here and enter into a time of prayer and I want to pray over anyone um, whose dirty linen is in public um, I want to pray over anyone that is feeling that you are failing I want to pray over anyone who has been married two three four times um, and the world is saying that you are damaged good you are messed up and you cannot do this anymore um, I want to pray over that man oh yes in the name of Jesus and um, that that messy situation that you have gone through um, that messy situation that you went through that business that failed um, that business deal that went bad um, and it has left your reputation in tatters and um, that you are struggling to set up another business and um, you are struggling to set it up and um, I want to speak to that woman or man that went into ministry um, and certain things happened that left you in a tricky and messy situation um, that men no longer want to be able to get you to rise up but I pray um, our rising up comes from God and um, oh promotion is not from the east or the west and promotion comes from God and may God himself begin to lift you up and may God begin to lift you up right now in the name of Jesus somebody I prophesy over you and that you are coming out I prophesy over you that you are coming out and I decree and I declare over you that you can come out and may you begin to come out in the name of Jesus and may you begin to come out somebody begin to arise up wherever you are and may you arise up now in the name of Jesus wherever you are um, I need you to begin to rise up I need you to begin to rise up and begin to speak to God and say Father Lord my dirty linen is out there and I'm in the public eye and oh Father Lord I've been dragged to the public I've been dragged before the crowd and I am standing before the crowd my story is out there and my story is out there my mess is out there and everyone is talking about me and everyone is talking about it and some are on the verge of stoning me to death and some are on the verge of throwing me under the bus and some are on the verge of seeing to it that I die and some are on the verge Lord of doing all manners of things to me and oh Lord I know I got myself in that situation and 
anyway I know that I partook in that situation anyway because the woman the adulterous woman knew that she had done the wrong thing and she had done the wrong thing and when she was brought to Jesus she was brought to the crowd and she had indeed done it and and I know that you may have done certain things and I know that you may have said certain things and but I pray in the name of Jesus that God will forgive us and and God will lift us up because it is God that lift up a man and it is God that will lift up a man that reputation that is in ruins and I pray in the name of Jesus that God will begin to lift up the help you to change your reputation help you to change and because God is going to take you on a journey that he will take you on a journey that will mend you and he will take you on a journey that will cause things to turn around and he will take you on a journey that will cause things to turn around in your life and, and the same people that spoke against you and will be the same people that will come and celebrate with you and I don't know if you know the story about Job and the Bible says that Job lost all his children and, and Job began to, to have boils and all manners of, of diseases on his skin and his three friends came the same three friends and they used to jubilate with him and rejoice with him and worship with him and the same people in the community that he, he had to provide for and was constantly providing for him the same people that raised him up and when Job faced the situation where his children died and and his own skin was now affected and they came and began to chastise him and, and began to say that he is a sinner and, and he had faulted God and, and he's pretended to be holy when he's not and they said all manners of things about Job and oh they said all manners of things and that he was a hypocrite he was a sinner and they condemned him and, but in the end God turned that situation around and when the truth came out and Job was the one that prayed for the people and, and the same people came God caused them and, to compel them to bring him gold and money and, and bless him in the name of Jesus may that be your story and everywhere you messed up that man took you into public and, and condemned you and chastised you and demanded your killing and demanded your punishment and I pray in the name of Jesus and that after you have saved your time and oh I pray in the name of Jesus that after you have worked on yourself and I pray in the name of Jesus because some of us some of the things that may, we may have done and, and some of the tethers that we may have caused them God will have to take us on a journey and I pray for strength to commit yourself to the journey and may you commit yourself to that journey and the process that God is going to take you through and, and when God brings you through on the other end and may men begin to rejoice with you and may men begin to celebrate with you and may your reputation go higher and higher in the name of Jesus and oh father I pray in the mighty name of Jesus or oh, for someone and whoever has messed up Lord and I pray that you will make a way I pray that you will make a way I pray that you will make a way and may you order their steps and may you begin to direct their paths in the name of Jesus Beloved, we're going to end today's prayers here and tomorrow we will come back and try and understand the story of the adulterous woman and what Jesus said and what Jesus uh, did and give you further explanation and we will begin to pray into it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for a brother or sister that has joined me today. I pray over them. Brothers and sisters, if, if there's anyone who has not yet accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, or if there's anyone who knows Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior but due to one situation or the other you may have backslidden or you may have given up on God I would ask you to please join me in prayer I want you to begin to pray and say Father Lord I thank you that you sent your only begotten son Jesus to die on the cross for me and, and Jesus I thank you that you died for my sin and I thank you that you died so that I would have a covenant with God I will be reconnected to God and I thank you that you sent your son you died for me and I believe that that Jesus Christ is my Lord and personal Savior and I believe that he died and rose again and he ascended into heaven and, and he is seated in heavenly places interceding for me and Jesus I thank you Lord I thank you I thank you may my name be written in the Lamb's book of life and, and may you help me through this journey that I'm going through may you help me through this journey and may you help me through this process because I know that I need to go through a process and, and I'm ready to work it out I'm ready to work the process and because I know when I come out the other end and I will be refined I will be purified and oh and my reputation will be re-established in the name of Jesus 
beloved please like this video please subscribe if you're not one of us not yet to subscribe please subscribe to this and i thank god for your life i thank him for everything that he is doing in your life in this season go with the blessings and the favor and the grace and prosperity of the most high till we meet again tomorrow morning may god richly bless you shalom